take this live. You ready? I guess that's why they say um, you got to stay ready so you don't have to get ready, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. You know, thank you guys out there. Thank, thank, first of all, thank you to our guests um, and to everyone who's maybe been waiting here for us. I am Joyce Johnson, author, speaker, sales champion, coach, and founder of Y Sales Network. Thank you guys for attending tonight's webinar series, My New Tech Sales Career. Hey, my guests and I, normally we have time to chat it up. And we have it, but hey, we're always ready. We're sales professionals. And if anybody know anything about sales, we always got our A game on. <laughs> so we're going to kick off tonight. I'm going to um, allow them to introduce themselves and to you. And then we're going to get started talking about um, sales and tech. You know, guys know that I believe sales is the best profession out there. It is um, the only profession where no matter what you study in school, um, your background, your education, your skill set, that you can take that and transfer into a successful sales role. So um, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get started. So to the right of me up top is Mike. So Mike, I'm going to hand the baton over to you and then you just drop it, you know, I, 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 so uh, <laughs> you, you drop it from place to place and then we'll get started. All right. Sounds good. Um, well, Joyce, thank you so much. Um, I absolutely agree with you with uh, sales being by far the best career that there is. Um, currently, I am a sales readiness leader at LinkedIn. I manage a team of sales performance consultants across the globe. And what we do is, is we help connect the sales methodology as well as our value engagement framework to sales leaders and individual contributors alike so they can help drive growth and value within the LinkedIn platform and our solutions. Prior to my tenure at LinkedIn, I was a direct frontline sales leader at Granger. That's where I have the privilege of knowing Joyce Johnson from. Um, I had a great time at Granger. I spent eight years there. Uh, I got to work in sales learning and delivery as well. Also some individual contributor roles. And then prior to that, just to give you all a little more context and background, I served in the United States Navy. I'm very proud of that. Uh, discipline is something that's key to my core. Uh, my father's a military veteran as well. So I was a logistics specialist in the Navy uh, for four years stationed in Norfolk, Virginia. So I will now pass it on to my panelists, fellow panelists, Deidre Brewer. Thanks, Mike. I do appreciate it. Good evening. And thanks, Joyce. Appreciate that. Uh, I am Deidre Brewer, and I'm an account executive at Microsoft. And I've been in my sales career for over 20 plus years in various different industries. So I've had an opportunity to serve multitude of customers uh, on the B2B and uh, B2C side. So I enjoy sales. You got to love it. You've got to be passionate about it. And it's just something you wake up and live and breathe every single day. You go to bed yes. thinking sales. So yes. I also share previous experience at Granger. Uh, I had a three-year history at Granger as an account uh, manager and had an opportunity to work with some wonderful customers and some wonderful peers and managers and leaders there. So it was a, a very wonderful opportunity prior to my career in joining Microsoft. I started with Microsoft uh, October of last year, and that was my physical starting date, but I actually had been interacting and building relationships and networking within Microsoft organization, probably about three to four years prior to joining on with Microsoft. So again, I'm an account executive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, yes. So pleasure to meet you guys. Looking forward to this awesome panel discussion. All right, well, Django last, but definitely not least. Well, hey, so um, my name is Django Degree. I am an account executive at Quarterpath, a startup in Austin. <clears throat> a little bit of background, I actually just jumped in my Tesla and drove to Austin like two days ago to actually start working here at the physical location since we have an office opening up. It's a startup. Um, I love it because we actually sell uh, software for salespeople. Um, we automate commissions and forecast revenue in one dashboard. And so we make it very easy for salespeople to you know, do a better job at their job, know how they're getting paid and why they're getting paid. And it's near and dear to my heart because I've always been in sales. I um, started at um, out of school in a sales role and I've worked at Salesforce. I've worked at some companies that resold software. So I've sold everything from like Splunk to companies like BuyerEye. And uh, I actually even sold some apps myself over the last six months. I had started a company before I came over to Quarterpath. So 
I absolutely love the process of sales. I feel like once you know how to sell, it never ends. So uh, you can never go hungry if you know how to sell. At least that's how I feel. Never go hungry. I like that one. You know, let me give you guys a little background. I know we sent you guys a note, but I want to give everyone a little background on why this particular panel. You know, there's been a lot of talk about diversity in the tech field for many years. And, you know, some of the tech companies just started beginning tracking um, their diversity numbers. You know, some of them five years ago, some of them as most recent as last year and making commitments to um, growing diversity and creating inclusive environments within their organizations. But for some reason, there's been some gap. Some say it's because um, STEM and, you know, um, individuals not, you know, women and, and people of color not going into um, STEM roles. I personally feel I can sell anything, right? I, you know, I think if you understand sales and you understand that sales process and you understand your customer and um, you build that, you know, that relationship. What I, I just think I can sell anything, right? And so it tickles me when I talk to um, companies and they'll say, well, we, you know, we want someone with tech, with a tech background. And I'm like, look, if I can sell 10 million over here, I can sell 10 million over there. So I guess my first question to you guys is going to be, you know, start with you, Deidre. You say you have been networking four years with Microsoft before actually starting in October, right? Can you right. share with us what some of that looked like? When did you really start um, networking and trying to get roles? Um, you know, who were some of the people? How, how did you navigate? And, and finally, how did you get that offer? Absolutely. So I made some great relationships. I served on the local chapter for NFN, National Sales Network Organization here in the Dallas CFW market as the VP of business development. And that allowed me an opportunity to build some, you know, very intimate relationships on corporate levels. I actually solicited corporations such as Dr. Pepper, um, some of the other big corporations here in the Dallas market to go to our NSN conference and actually sponsor National Sales Network. And with that, one contact leads to another contact. The network just, took off with me kind of having multiple touch points, meeting new people, engaging and interacting with new people. And I actually formed a relationship with some mentees that uh, are actually were engineers at Microsoft. Very, very smart, brilliant millennials that kind of know their business and know their stuff. And they may not have had the sales background, but I had years of sales experience. So it was kind of like an exchange relationship where you know, if they could teach me something about technology and help me grow in the space of technology, I could teach them a little bit of my skills about sales. So I think it's like always about a give and take in a relationship that you're building. And when you're networking and looking for an opportunity to gain a new experience, gain a new opportunity and head in the direction that you're looking to go. Lost you, George. Can't hear you. Sorry, why did I even mute the mic? I, I like what you said there about how you can share something with them if they share something with you, right? And I, I share this with young people, even the interns and things that you're you're there for a reason, right? Everyone brings something to the table. And it's important to know that we all bring something to the table and that even within that interviewing process, we're, we're interviewing them as well as they're interviewing us. And so I love um, the fact that I know that sometimes um, in different parts of our career, whatever, for some of our young people, they may not be as confident as, as you, Ms. Deidre, but I like that you made a note of that, that you teach me a little technology and I'll teach you how I can take technology and my particular skills, skill set and go make it happen. So I, I think that's important. So, so Jane, why, you know, first of all, just why sells for you? Because I'm trying to convince young people like every single day to go into sales. So why sales for you? Let's start there. Uh, for me, my father was in sales, <clears throat> worked in Oracle back in 2000. And I wanted to trek my own path. So the first job I got out of college, I actually went and found a company on my own and got cold hired there. Um, I didn't want to kind of follow his footsteps. But when I was younger, my dad told me that there were three ways that he knew, or I'm sorry, four ways he knew how to make a ton of money. He could be a doctor. You could be a lawyer, 
you can, I'm sorry, three, doctor, lawyer, or salesperson. And so I was like, well, I don't know what you mean by that. And he was like, you can go to school. You can be, you know, all this extra school for being a doctor. You can spend all this extra time doing stuff to be a lawyer. Or, you know, I've seen people close, you know, get million dollar checks over, you know, doing sales. So when I finished college, I just figured, you know, I'd, I'd like to make a million dollars. So I immediately got started in a BD role. And I think that a lot of people don't realize um, that somebody sells almost everything, you know, like whether it's some of the, like what stuff gets inside of a store, if it's the technology that sits behind your phone, like every piece to everything at some point, someone has to have a negotiation to sell it. And so, you know, if you're able to find how you add that value or you join that company and you learn how to add that value, you get paid for every sale that you do. And I feel like there isn't an easier way to be worth so much to a company because at the end of the day, you don't fire the person who's making, who's bringing you the most money. I mean, there's it, just no way around it. Absolutely. You know, and everything begins with the cell. So that's what, what makes the cell cycle for the global economy, you know. And I also share with people that it's great to have some sales experience. I remember being in college and everyone had to take a speech class, right? Because they wanted you to be able to speak in front of an audience and give a presentation. Now, if I look back on it, they really wanted you to be prepared to go sell yourself. Mm. They wanted you to be able to take key points and communicate out so that you can sell yourself. So whether you're an engineering student, an accounting student, communications, what have you, when you get to that interviewing level or if your company says, you know, hey, Mike, we want you to go and find a software, you know, that we need to be successful for our salespeople to help them engage and you, you're the procurement manager or the CFO or what have you, and you get on the phone with Django and you're talking about it and he convinces you. Now you have to go sell it to your company, your organization and say, why should we spend millions of dollars on this software? Mm -hmm. So, you know, everything begins with selling. I think those speech classes really if they think about it now, as most colleges, a lot of colleges are having sales programs, they were really teaching us how to go sell ourselves. So, uh, Michael, question for you. And, you know, yes, we were together in the past. Um, <laughs> great seeing your face. Um, one thing for you, what, why tech sales? Why, why did you transition? Yeah, so, um, <laughs> so I appreciate the question, Joyce. Um, first, I start off by saying, Never in a million years that I think I was going to do MRO sales when I got to Granger. And then the other side of that coin is never, ever did I think I would do tech sales. I just didn't. <laughs> um, but kind of what resonated with me was it was about two years ago in 2019. I had the privilege of attending one of the executive leadership council meetings, um, symposiums in D.C., and there we got to have a lot of keynote speakers. But a lot of the dialogue and the context of that conversation was the fact that we're already experiencing the next industrial revolution. And the key area where the next industrial revolution was occurring was in tech. And it was really profound because I looked around this room and there were leaders from all different walks of life that Microsoft, Apple, um, I mean, basically Cisco, any company you could imagine, you know, that's large was there. And there were so many individuals who were in the tech sector. And I'm looking around saying, I sell tools and hammers and widgets uh, so that, you know, so, so I was like, how can I apply this and, and how can I take, you know, this this key information and really apply it? And, and, and the reason why I really when I first applied at LinkedIn, it was I wasn't looking at the tech that aspect. Really, what I did was I looked at the culture of the organization first. Um, you know, a few of us on this panel have worked at Granger. We know about the culture there, the leadership. That was something that initially drove me to LinkedIn. But really, I've always been passionate around professional development. I've always been very passionate around coaching and sales learning and delivery. And when I kind of really just self-reflected internally, I quickly realized, hey, Michael, you can't get any bigger than LinkedIn when it comes to doing that on a global platform. So then as I started going through the interview process, Joyce, and I will say it was a two month interview process. I had to do over six interviews. Um, so it was kind of like nail biting. And so I finally got the final phone call stating that I was going to be the final candidate selected. But I quickly realized that I now have the ability to impact not just you know certain people, but almost all people in every aspect. And the tech industry, no matter what part of tech you're in, you get to connect with people in small silos, but also globally. 
Um, and when we can start driving and educating those on tech and giving them the confidence that they need to sell in this space, I think that we're going to really see a lot of new innovation as well as a lot of scalability across the entire tech organization, which is why I do feel it's the next industrial revolution. And I'm glad to be a part of it. That, that's, you know, that's awesome. And I, um, were we at the um, ELC together? Were we there together? Yes, we were. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> because, well, I just, you know, I just remembered that conversation about how we're changing globally with the digital level. And one of the things that I became immediately passionate about, passionate about there was when we talked about the job replacement, how technology is replacing jobs, right? Just, um, you know, it being garbage day yesterday and you, you look out and there used to be in a neighborhood, there was three men on a garbage truck, right? And then there became two men there would be two inside and one on the, or no, one inside and two on the back. Then it became one on the back and one inside. And now there's just one driver and there is a tool that comes out, pick up the cans, dump it, and put the cans back down in front of your house. And, you know, we were brainstorming and talking about solutions to find jobs for people to, for all the people that would be displaced by technology. You know, we either had to create another space for those people or we had to find um, or we had to retrain them. And, you know, and they challenged us as as leaders to be mindful of that. And so, I, you know, I, I like that that stuff is stuck with me as well. So we'll have to chat about that. And I think um, also just being with LinkedIn on that global platform is amazing as well. So thank you. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Um, so let me, I'll, I'll, I'll um, ask this to all of you guys, you know, so you're selling um, in that tech space. I like to know, is it different? Because everyone, when they're interviewing us, you know, um, Deidre, I also shared that role that you had um, as vice president of business development for National Sales Network here in the Houston market and had an opportunity to go wide with connections and, you know, just a great time, you know, and who don't love conferences, right? So and then you go to conferences and you have even more time and meet great people like yourself. But I just like to, to ask all, all you guys, you know, is it really that different? Not what you're selling, whether it's tangible, non-tangible, but the sales process. has Is the sales process different? Right? So Deidre, I'd like for you to answer that first. Is the sales process different when you're selling from your widgets before to selling technology now? I would say there is a difference because when you're selling widgets, it could become very transactional, right? And COVID proved that, you know, when everyone was trying to get their hands on PPE and, and things like that, it's, it's, it's a commodity and it's something that they need. It was in high demand. So whether I was visible, present, available or not, that's something that they needed. They were going to buy it regardless if I was out there selling it or in the bed sleep. Um, I do think that selling has a lot to do with relationships, establishing relationships and building relationships, knowing about your customer, having insight to your customer, being able to share insight with your customers about customers that are similar to them and similar to their organization and their business. Um, as far as the sales process, you still have to... You still have to understand the, the need. You have to understand the budget, the timeline, all of that's important. Uh, and you have to know your customer. You have to know your customer, know your customers, something about your customer's business uh, in order for your sales to continue. You can sell something and it be a transactional sale and then you're done, right? right. But if you want the business to be residual, repeat, you have to continue to build relationships and explore and find new opportunities within that company, organization, or your customer's business. Well, I sort of think you do that in the um, in that widget market as well, right? I mean, you yeah. want that customer to continue to buy from you and you want to continue to expand and add services to it and things of that nature. But that hmm, I'm going to think on that. Thank you. You know, because that's that's always been a, a question of mine when people say, well, we really want someone with tech sales experience. And I'm just wondering, you know, 
what would, you know, what's the difference? I can go in and build that rapport and that relationship and maintain that relationship because if they buy the one, they still have to keep buying and buying and buying. Um, so, you know, let's all think on that a little bit. So, uh, Michael, I'll go to you. I know you haven't been there long, yeah. you know, haven't been there long, but, um, you know, tell <laughs> me, do you, do you feel the difference in it? Do you feel the same way? Is it different? Um, so yeah, so I've been there six weeks. Um, and I'll be honest, you know, I, when I first got there, I was told from a lot of folks, Hey, you're going to be drinking from the fire hose, massive organization, a lot of different, um, you know, solutions. We have acronyms for acronyms and it's true. It's a lot and it's coming at me fast. But <laughs> what, what I'll say, Joyce, my true North kind of kicked in when I got to really meet like, you know, the sales learning and delivery team or the sales readiness team got to learn about their sales methodology and their framework. And it was funny. I actually called my mother and I said, oh, I've got this. I'm home because <laughs> I know this ins and out. And the reality is, is when you when you think about sales in general, everything is a negotiation. Everything is a negotiation in our life. I negotiate with my wife daily. I negotiate with my children daily. The end result is, is that every negotiation, we're just trying to find an optimal impact that both sides can find beneficial. And so that's the same in sales. It doesn't matter if it's an MRO. It doesn't matter if it's in tech. If we can understand the different points of emphasis for individuals that make them feel comfortable and confident with whatever we're selling, it shouldn't matter what, you know, where we are as far as if it's tech, if it's MRO, if it's supply chain. Um, you know, one of my favorite sayings always is people buy from people that they like. And the way that we get for someone to like us is to be able to understand their pain points and how to get to root cause to help them solve for the challenges that they face daily. Yes. You know, I, I like that because someone asked me um, yesterday, well, what are you selling? You know, what are you, you know, what are you really selling? And I said, you know, I, and I needed to do a sales tip on it. I just didn't like the way I looked yesterday. So I deleted it, but it was, it was uh, but you know, I said, I sell trust, right? I, I sell trust. And I buy trust every day, you know, and that saying is people buy it from people that they like, know and trust. Right. And so people trust Joyce Johnson. They trust the Joyce Johnson brand. They trust that I'm going to tell them the truth, good, bad or ugly. They trust that I'm going to show up. I'm going to I'm going to deliver. I'm going to be on time. I'm going to follow up. And so, you know, I've had customers. We've had horrible implementations or, or different things, but. Um, they trust that I was going to go back and try to, you know, work on their behalf or negotiate on their behalf, as you say, Michael. And so, and I also buy trust, right? So now that I'm a business owner, I buy trust. When I hire people, it's, I need to have people that I can trust, right? To show up, to follow up, to do what they're going to do. Um, and when I'm buying products or services, whether it's my ADT guy or my ADP guy <laughs> or whoever it is, I, I, I'm buying trust. So, yeah, I, you know, and I believe that too um, about negotiating all day with parents and, and spouses and children. Um, it's, it's a negotiation. Um, Deidre, I want to go back to you because what I want to ask is if there is a difference in that sales um, approach, what do you think companies can do to um prepare people or train them for that versus saying um, we don't have a, an inclusive environment because you don't know how to sell tech. Yeah. So um, I think you the individual, there's some preparation that you have to do within yourself as an individual and just being able to understand a little bit about the industry that you're going into and the industry that you're about to serve, because it's a totally different, um, it's, it's just a totally different mix of clients in a sense, right? I found myself at Granger uh, going into my customer's account and finding that they had challenges with technology, right? Just technology. Oh, yeah. When I'm there to sell products, I'm there to sell some products. I'm there to sell some solutions. I'm there to sell, you know, the value that Granger had to offer. Uh, but their challenges were dealing with a lot of technology issues. And it was, for me, I found myself saying, okay, if I could just show them how to do this simple thing or to show them how to how this will make their job easier, make their life easier. And I started gravitating to just making sure that I took the time to do just that one little thing. Um, 
totally different in probably the level of the client base that you're interacting with. Not to say that you can't go from selling this to selling that. I think it's just a different a shift in the mindset of the, what that focus is and being very strategic, um, very succinct with the customer's business. Again, you have to know the customer's business. You have to know a little bit about what you're solving for going in to understand, you know, what are their daily problems? What are the pain points? What keeps them up at night? Uh, but that's in any business, any business that deals with sales, you have to understand what are the pain points? Because if you're not bringing value to their business or value to their organization, then what are you there for? So I think what I'm hearing you saying too, is that I think we all have that skill set and we can all go into sell. It's just a matter of companies um, taking that chance finding that they like a, a, a guy like Mike and taking a chance on him and bringing him in and say, Hey, come. Um, and, and, you know, like you said, we have to do our piece too. We have to, a lot of times we go in um, when I, you know, coaching young people, we talk about the jobs we've had, what we do on the job, but we haven't really said what we accomplished on the job by what we did. Right. We haven't really stated the impact, but we have to do what we need to do to be prepared and to show up. Um, what, what I say our game face on and close, close the deals. A lot of times people just don't ask for the job, you know, and, I, and in my mind, if you don't ask for the job, you're not asked for the sale, <laughs> right? So if you're not going to ask for the job, you're probably not going to ask for the sale. So let me move to the next guy and hire that Django guy and get him over here to make something happen. <laughs> so, um, Django, so you've always sold in a check space. Is that correct? Uh, I've actually, so I've flipped houses for a little bit. I did a little okay. bit of wholesaling. I've okay. sold and done some stuff. As far as like since college and W-2s, it's always been technology, but I have done a bit of selling on different products as well. Okay. So what do you think the difference has been now that you're selling in tech? The thing I would say that is the difference is understanding your customer because at the end of the day, what you're trying to do is show the value of whatever product you have. When I was trying to wholesale, when I was trying to flip houses, I was trying to show to someone who wanted what I had, why they should buy what I have at the price that I have it. And so when I worked at August Shell, when I worked at Salesforce, when I worked at Quarter, now that I'm at Quarter Path, understanding what the, what is keeping my customer up at night, understanding the process by which they're doing it and understanding the way in which they speak. So they think, wow, yeah, this guy gets me is what matters most. So what I would say is that every product and company to some extent is different. But the question that I think every person who's going to hire someone has is like, can I trust that this person will follow the process as well as, you know, learn but even better ways to actually, you know, do the job that they're going to be, you know, an A1 contributor. Um, and that's just the thing I've, I've seen at, at every company I've been at. I mean, it, it sure, it is tough learning about all the products. When I was at Salesforce, they told me we were going to be drinking from a fire hose on all the different things. But I would say every situation was just a little bit tweaked because I needed to learn how to speak my customer's language and take the time to mirror them so that they felt like they they came to the decision like, wow, I asked these questions of them and they're like, that. this is exactly what I need actually. I do need Salesforce. I do need Quarterpath. I do need FireEye. So I would say that, that that's kind of where I've seen the difference, um, not just from the widgets and like the home to, to technology, but every industry that I sold into. And I like that you said that really understanding your customer. There's a lot of tools to help us understand our customers like yeah. DISC and, you know, um, Strength Finder, all those. But really being able to mirror your customer, I think that um, you sound like an old seller saying that. You're like You sound like you've been selling 20 years when you said that, Django. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, being able to, you've been listening to your dad, right? Um, oh. Yeah. He's a, he's a beast. So, um, <laughs> but being able to mirror your customer because and understand how they like things and how how they you know um, want to receive information as well. You may have a way that you want to give the information, but everyone wants to receive it differently because everyone we're all different, right? And we all have um, different ways that we learn 
And so I, I think that's important. That's a great point about um, mirroring your customer. And also that, um, you know, tech is different no matter what tech is, right? Tech just isn't in a box either. And with that said, I think what I like for each of you guys to do, and I, I know, um, you know, that's what happens on these webinars. We pick up on a conversation and then we just go with it versus, you know, the checkbox we had. Um, but I, I would like for each of you to really, you know, just take, um, you know, give your elevator pitch about your company or organization or, or what it is you're selling. Mm -hmm. um, you know, take, you know, six seconds or whatever to explain that to our audience. So um, I did, Jane, go, go look at the organization that you written now. And when I saw working around sales commissions to help salespeople, I'm like, yep. okay, that's my language. So um, I like to give each of you the opportunity. To tell us a little bit about your organization. I know it's been two days over there in Austin, but I, I'm sure you've done your homework. Oh, yeah, no. So I've actually been with the company since December. I just was working remotely. Okay. But to, to give you a background on Quarter Path, I mean, the way we think about it, our founder, AJ, he, he had um, created a company called Trinkite and he exited. But when he was going from zero to 140 salespeople, the challenge he faced was he was trying to make sure people were paid correctly. People understood why they were being paid. And at the end of the day, if any of you have ever been in a sales role, you know, like when I was at Salesforce, I lived in my Excel spreadsheet. I wanted to make sure I was being paid correctly on this on this spiff that we had or, you know, I've hit my number. How close am I? And so what they worked to create for the last I think we just had our three year anniversary is a product that not only works for the admin office, like the back end, but also works for the reps. So the reps know how much they're going to make and they're able to see how close they are to their number. And it helps increase the, the motivation because it's like, wow, I'm only, you know, two deals away. If I could just pull this deal in from next quarter or next month and for the back office to see the same information as the reps so that there's not an email conversation of, hey, here's your Excel spreadsheet. Is it correct? And then, you know, it goes back and forth. It's all about transparency. It's all about um, uh, easy and like flexibility. I'm able to actually build out the tool myself. I, I just demoed it today for a couple of customers. And I, honestly, I just love how simple the tool is overall. And we even have a free version for reps. So if you know you start a job and you wanted to kind of build things out, I'd be more than happy to help anyone. It's it's so easy to use to put your commission your commission um, structure in, and then literally be able to see exactly how much you could be making, how much you are going to make, and why you're making it. And I like that, you know, transparency, transparency is very important amongst us salespeople when it comes to our earnings and Nothing our commissions. I'm sure everyone on the call will be in agreement there, um, you know, and, and so I, I really like that. It sounds like a really um, effective tool. And, you know, it also it, it could motivate people to push them a little bit more. Right. I yeah. always say, you know, yeah, you can take off early on a Friday or the holiday when everyone's um, you think everyone's gone. But there's someone in that office and sometimes the gatekeeper is gone so you can get directly to the person that you want to speak with. Right. Yeah. So if you if you're looking at it that closely and you understand, hey, if I do this, I could, you know, jump over that that hoop for more commissions. That's a motivator with itself. Yeah. yeah. And for those and for those companies, too, I know that if I had spent even half the time that I spent in my Excel spreadsheets on calls, I could have closed a lot more deals. But I was always in that Excel spreadsheet like, is this am I really making what I'm supposed to be making? Is it are, is this the right number? Is my exactly the same as this? Like you just go back and forth because you're just double checking your formula. So I just I saw the power. That's why I went. That's why I had to join the team. I, when I saw the product, I was like, man, I, this would have saved Salesforce so much money if I wasn't in my Excel. <laughs> you know, and love the passion of it. Right. We have to, you know, it's, it's great when we have that passion about what we do as well. Right. So that's always good. So um, did you share with our audience about Microsoft and what you're selling there. I know everyone thinks they know who Microsoft is, but educate us. Yes. So I'm in the digital sales space for Microsoft and I sell digital transformations to my customers and taking them from, uh, you know, the older version of Microsoft and Windows to the cloud. Everybody talks about the cloud now and that's where we should be. That's where we should be going. Um, so, you know, there's a lot to know about what Microsoft sells and what Microsoft has to offer from Cloud. So our cloud is uh, called Azure. We we sell Azure apps and infra, data and AI. You know, everybody needs data now. You need to have the data to understand what's going on in your business, 
artificial intelligence. That's something that's going to be very, very important, you know, in the future as we look at, you know, the healthcare industry and various different industries. Um, you know, your modern work is in anything dealing with your office, Office 365 products, products that we all use, we're all familiar with from Excel, Word, email, all of that. Uh, security is very high topic now. So when, you know, COVID happened and we went to digital transformation, we want to make sure that our customer's environment is, is secure. And, you know, they're working in remote environments now. So security and compliance is very important. And then um, um, insight, customer insights. So if you want to know information about your customer, we have the Dynamics products that deal with customer insights and power apps. There's a, there's a lot to know about what Microsoft has to offer and a lot to know. We, we integrate with a lot of different things in, in customer's business. So again, it went back to what Django was saying, just really understanding your customer's business, speaking their language, they know a look, they know their business, but when they share and open up and kind of tell us more about what they do, what they focus on, how do they make money? How do they make profits from their business? It helps us to be able to kind of position those solutions that's going to help them succeed and, and thrive in their business. So digital transformation, anything digital transformation, cloud solution. Now, I will I will say this, Joyce. Yes, I work with a group of brilliant brilliant specialists, technicians, architect solutions. So I don't have to be the smartest one in my group. I have a wonderful pod that uh, focus on every specific area. And I bring my pod along with my customer calls so that they have an opportunity to kind of hear um, what the customer is dealing with, what, what are their needs. And, you know, we go to bat for making sure that we understand and, and can bring clarity to that uh, to be able to sell those solutions to sell those solutions into their environment. So you know, it's, wonderful to, it's, it's wonderful to have that simply because I'm not going to know every ins and out about every single technology and solution that Microsoft has to offer, and it's constantly changing. I mean, when you think about technology, it's changing day in and day out and at a rapid pace. And, you know, and I like to I, I like to recap that how you mentioned you do have those specialists and brilliant people that go out with you because um, I think a lot of times people think oh that salespeople are just out there on our own and you know in, in my book why sales for college students one thing I said to them is don't lose a loan right I when I remember growing up in at and in sales I would always say you know hey my here's my tech guy he's like my American Express card don't leave home without him you know, so it's great that comp that Microsoft have those resources to support you so that you can so I'm really understanding the customer business and you have someone like you said, things are ever changing. Um, so when you have those specialists that are, you know, constantly educating themselves with that, they can make sure that you're making the right commitments, you know, keep us honest as, as salespeople, as we say, keep us honest, but also help us grow our business, um, you know, relationship with the customer. So awesome. And yeah, then we uh, also work with a uh, partner ecosystem. So the partner e ecosystem <coughs> allows that collaboration between Microsoft and the customer so that they can help uh, on the service piece of their business and their licenses. So it's building a let network wide, deep, wide and deep. Wide and deep. That was my theme one year. I always like to make up these themes for selling. And I was watching football one year, I guess towards the end of the year. So the next year, I'm like, my my theme is going to be to go wide, right? And so everything I had on there, we, you know, we, we we're going to go wide and just, you know, touch every um, department within an organization to be able to build those extra relationships. So I, I love that. Yes. Wide and deep, you guys. You hear what she's saying? Wide and deep. <laughs> So, so, Micah, tell us a little bit about LinkedIn. I mean, we all have LinkedIn accounts and we, we know everything LinkedIn. You know, tell us, I, I had a conference call today with someone that I actually met on LinkedIn. And next thing you know, I'm showing her how to set up, I'm sharing my screen, showing her how to set up events and send invites on LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that, that's awesome, Joyce. Um, so, I yeah, I'm sure many of you all... As many of you all know, um, attending this event, you know, we, we are a social media platform where we basically connect talent in the world to large organizations as well as small organizations. Um, but we also have, 
you know, really, if I was to look at LinkedIn, I look at it through two silos because the digital marketing, the ad marketing, um, you know, being able to help people with job placement, that's in a sense, one silo. And we have different, you know, different platforms as far as whether it's government, whether it's healthcare, um, whether you're also looking at ad agencies, th there's that piece. But then the other big piece that sometimes people do forget, it's LinkedIn learning and it's the learning capabilities. Um, and, and I mean, we're, qu we're quick to take the courses on there. But the fact that that is a part of our core value proposition um, in regards to helping educate sales professionals across multiple different careers, multiple different skill sets. And then there's the big piece around our marketing labs where we're helping connect marketing best practices and techniques to even someone that's a beginner. I'll tell you right now, Joyce, that was instrumental in my ramp up speed and really understanding the marketing space uh, around, you know, ad agency channels, around cost per clicks, you know, click through rates, uh, lead gen forms. I didn't know any of that stuff, but fortunate for me going through some of the marketing courses at LinkedIn, it really helped give me a foundation now to be able to coach and to help sales leaders reinforce those concepts with the different products and solutions we're selling at LinkedIn. And that's good too, because I, I took a couple of them. Um, I did a couple of them myself, right? And that's one thing I miss about um, being in a corporate environment because I would just like, if I was up late at night, sometimes I would just go and do some of that virtual, those virtual trainings and things, you know, basically on anything. And I think now I'm learning a lot on Clubhouse. I'm doing a Clubhouse training. I am like love Clubhouse. I haven't been on there much this week, but it's, it's definitely addictive. And, um, but yeah, the LinkedIn learning, you guys go on there because I know we spend a lot of money on different training courses and programs and things. And the LinkedIn learning courses, they aren't very long and what have you, but they are very, they're, they're to the point. Right. And, um, yeah, so I, I think, um, we thank you for reminding everyone of that resource. Absolutely. So are there any questions for us? I'm, let me see here. I, I'm, I wanted to tell you, one? no, no, no. I wanted to tell you. So one of the reasons I love sales so much is closing deals. And while we were talking, I just closed another deal. And I just want you guys to know my favorite part about sales is, especially technology sales is sure. You can have like a base salary or any of that stuff, but like every time you close a deal, it's like more money in your pocket at the end of the day. And so, you know, having another deal come in, seeing that come in and like the PO and everything else. I mean, at the end of the day, that's money in your pocket. And so, you know, people always try to push you to work harder at different jobs, like, you know, McDonald's. Or I, when I worked at McDonald's and these other places, it was cool. But I mean, to know that putting in the work can equate to more money in your pocket and the amount of output you put in can be the amount of input you get. I think there's nothing better in regards to that with technology sales. It's it's my favorite thing. So I, I started smiling because I was like, oh, there it is. <laughs> you know, and I try to share that with, with young people also, you know, get them past the myth of sales and the fear of sales and say, embrace it, right? Be able yeah. to buy you a home after your first year, be able to start paying off those student loans if you have them, you know, and, and I tell them, get off, I want to get you off your parents' couch because your old room is now a man cave, a she, a she shed, a, 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 a knitting room. It is no longer your room. <laughs> you know, your parents may convert it back after they get grandkids, but they will not be converting it for you. <laughs> so, you know, just try sales. When you go on LinkedIn, where, where Mike works, or um, any of the in Indeed, those, any of those platforms where they um, post jobs, there are more job openings in a sales profession than any other job, hands down. You know, um, one week I went on to Indeed and I just put sales jobs in the U.S. and things like that. And I, um, I entry level because I was about to speak at a college and it was like for over 400,000, 400,000 jobs. And so I, you know, I, I coach that to college students and young people, young professionals all the time, because sometimes people go into a career and then they're thinking, oh, I really didn't want to be an accountant after all. I really didn't want to be an engineer after all. I really didn't want to be a lawyer after all. I didn't want to be a nurse. Okay, go and sell pharmaceuticals, pharmaceutical, you know, pharmacy supplies, medical equipment. There's just so many things. And this generation grew up in tech. So I'm really looking for this generation to be able to kick down some um, doors in that technology space, especially, you know, our um, our um, minorities and our, our young women. Right. Um, but 
you just hit it on the nail, go and close some business and, you know, and be able to, you got a bell you ring at the house or something when you close, you know? No, I, well, one, one no. thing I didn't, one thing I wanted to add to you, Joyce, for that is like another thing that can be helpful is make sure you guys reach out to all of us because the way that I got yes. this job is go to path. I didn't go through a traditional sales uh, like interview process. I, I reached out to a buddy of mine who was down here in Texas because I wasn't in Texas. I told him I was very interested in the job. He's really connected. I'm actually staying with him now. And he got me some introductions to people in who were looking for sales talent. And so the more you spend, you, I mean, I'm sure you guys have heard this, your network is like your net worth, but that's also the same thing for jobs because at the end of the day, I would have never even known about the job that I have now if it wasn't for the person who I've known for a while, who I stayed connected with for when the time came, he put his name behind me. And that's how, you know, they were able to trust me. And my interview process was like uh, two weeks. And I met with a couple of people and they were like, yeah, we like this guy. And they, we have like, you know, the person who we know and we trust, trust him. So, I mean, I'm sure you guys can speak to that too. When there's someone who's there, who speaks to, you know, your skill and your talent, it can get you Absolutely. jobs even beyond where we are. So, I mean, I mean, just for all of you, and I'm sure you guys have seen that happen too. Absolutely. Michael, did you know someone over at LinkedIn? Yeah, I was actually, you know, Django, your, your words are definitely resonating with me, brother, because because you're, you're spot on. Um, the power of networking, networking, and we hear it all the time, but I think more importantly, networking with intent. And what does that mean? You know, I had Joyce, I'm sure you remember this name, Lois Router. Lois yes. actually <laughs> connected me with an individual at LinkedIn that one helped start the conversation, but also building my brand, building my network there. But even then, once I actually got in the organization, not letting that connection die, she helped introduce me to other folks, um, really helped me get acclimated to learning more about tech as well. Um, and I think one of the things, uh, too, that, that I don't think we've touched on on this panel yet, you know, part of it, Joyce, I think when when we're talking about, you know, why sales, because like Django said, the fact that you can instantaneously, instantaneously increase your monetary wealth off of sales and deals, I think sometimes people shy away from sales. And I've seen people that are introverts shy away. Some of the best sales professionals I've met are actually introverted. Sales is a skill and it's a, it's a craft we perfect over time, but we have to remove our own unconscious bias. And I definitely think there's an unconscious bias around tech. And what I mean by that is we have to be uncomfortable with the uncomfortable. You do not grow unless you go through adversity. And where I've seen the biggest growth in my professional career, whether it's been MRO, whether it's been tech, even when it was when I was in the military, it's when I took on a new challenge and a new task that really challenged me emotionally. It really challenged my mindset. It really made me have to learn and adopt new things to perfect my craft. That's when you're going to see the best excellence come out in yourself. So I think that, um, that that's one of the things if you're debating why tech, like I said, I never, ever would have thought that I would be in tech. However, being able to challenge myself to learn something new and to see that growth, I'm excited to see what comes out on the back end. So definitely lean into lean into the uncomfortable things in life because you'll you'll surprise yourself. Yes, let's all lean in, lean in. You know, <laughs> but um, th that is so true. You know, so so on on point there. Um, because I, I've leaned into a lot of discomfort and you have to be able to challenge yourself on that intro and extra. I'm like right there on the line and people don't realize that about me. They People just don't believe it when I tell them I'm like, I'm like right in the middle. You know, I could fall over on, on either side, you know, but I get up every day and I make a decision. So I want to read one quote, um, one statement here. Um, Annie Wade put on here. She said, um, we've been selling since we were kids. The fundraisers we've been participating in since elementary school are essentially selling as well, whether it's candy bars, raffle tickets. Um, the goal was to connect with the customer and to get the buy-in while um, showcasing the value um, when you were raising money for. And I remember, you know, here doing COVID um, and Girl Scout cookies, my little niece Kennedy had to get very creative. So she made these flyers and she went all around um, her neighborhood, putting flyers on people's doors saying, I'm going to be in front of my house with a table on Saturday at this time, you know, if you want Girl Scout cookies. She didn't go to the supermarket. She couldn't go, right? Everything was closed down. She didn't go, you know, actually physically knock on her door and say, but everyone came to her table and she sewed out of her cookies and she had to order, take orders. So she just started taking orders, right? Um, but she sold all her cookies like 
probably within a couple of hours. And then she has to begin to take orders so she can um, go have people come back the next week and get their cookies. So, you know, have to get creative. We're always, you know, we're selling. And I, you know, and, and I gave her a high five. I was like, wow, you're a sales champion. <laughs> like, you're good, you know, because I want to begin encouraging um, her now that sales is not a bad thing. Sales is a great thing. And look at how when you went out and sold things and you got creative, you know, look at, you know, what you were able to accomplish. So, yes, absolutely. And we have to, um, you know, like I say, lean in to discomfort. I have a quote that uh, my team put on something where I said, I was talking to someone, I said, I know what it is to be um, um, fearless and afraid at the same time. Maybe afraid of something, but I still got to go for it and I got to push myself through to it. So you guys, um, if you're having any, um, Mm, this comfort about sales, fears about sales concerns, like our panel said, reach out to us and, you know, and, you know, you know, join us, um, you know, in the sales world, because it's a great place and great space to be in. Boy, time goes by so fast when we're doing this. I tell you, um, one thing I do want to, I'm going to have everyone um, tell you how you can reach out to them. Before that happens, I want to say to everyone that we are planning our Y Sales Network annual conference. It's our second. We had one last year that's supposed to be in Bimini Island. We couldn't go, can't go to Cancun this year. I promise you guys, if everything works out next year, we're going to be somewhere on the beach. But with that said, we are virtual again this year. So go to Y Sales Network, um, register for our, our annual conference. We um, have the pre-sale tickets now actually expires tomorrow night um, for $49. Um, we have some great speakers. We're going to um, open up with a heart note. We're going to, you know, get into everyone's psychic and kind of help people try to relax and transform your thought before you get into the conference, you know, as we storytelling with you. And then we're going to have a breakout section um, with some great speakers um, in the breakout. We have a panel, She Talks Tech, where we're going to have some women um, come in and talk about tech and their tech careers. We um, are going to have the Sales View, which is a, a, um, a talk show that's going to take place live on it. We'll, on, on the platform for the annual conference. We will also um, do additional breakout. We'll have companies there that's looking to hire people. We have, um, a, we're going to close it out with a panel from sales to the C-suite because every C-level person that I've talked to about their role, they either started in sales or when they say what really helped them transition was that they got out of their comfort zone and took a role in sales and being in sales really helped them get that full understanding of the organization. So I thought it was important to do that. And then we're going to end that that day, um, June 24th, with a virtual happy hour. So um, go to um, www.ysalesnetwork.com. Go sign up for our annual conference. We look forward to having you there. And we're going to do the same thing. First of all, Thank you um, to our panelists. Don't hang up when we um, close off. I want to chat with you guys for a minute. But thank you so much um, for joining me tonight, for sharing, for being open um, and being willing to educate our viewers and share your experiences because it's so important that people are able to get this information and, and see someone who's living um, where they want to be right? They can see it and feel it. So thank you for that. So uh, Mike, I'll start with you and then we'll go like we did before. If you would just let them know how they can contact you. Yeah, absolutely. So um, my name is Michael Ferguson. I will say it's spelled different. It's F-U-R-G-A-S-O-N. Um, but absolutely, um, no pun intended. You can reach out to me on LinkedIn. Um, that's going to be the best way um, to, to connect with me. But I'm open to any connections, whether it's things around professional development more dialogue and context around tech, um, or if it's just anyone that just, you know, is looking for a form, any type of mentorship, I'd be more than happy to support that as well. Um, and the last thing I would leave, um, just because of the quotes you were saying, Joyce, there's one that I love that I think is important, especially in the context of the conversation we had. And it's that fear has two meanings. You can either face everything and run, or you can face everything and rise. The choice is yours. So if you're thinking about tech, I think you've got three exceptional panelists that have been here and they've proven the ability to rise in tech. So leverage the people that are on this panel and leverage the people in your network. I love it. Thank you. I love it. Ms. Deidre, and I, by the way, I love that blue on you. 
<laughs> How Thank they you. reach? And my team is putting in their LinkedIn um, profiles in here too. If you guys want to click on that and then just um, you know connect to them, their profiles are being added. But how can people reach out to you? Absolutely. So LinkedIn is going to be the best way for me as well. And my name is spelled Deidre, D-E-E-D-R-A, last name Brewer, like Milwaukee Brewers. And just reach out, connect with me on LinkedIn. I think I've made a ton of connections, built tons of relationships via LinkedIn. So Michael, I'm giving kudos to you now. (laughs) Um, And I just want to say this, once you remove the intimidation factor, you can go sell anything to anybody C-suite, regardless of what level, president of the company, CEO of the company. I look at it like this. They get up, they're human. They're going to put on their clothes the same way we do every single day. So if you can have a conversation, whether it be over the phone, virtual, face-to-face, and interact with people, just as if you're giving them the same respect and courtesy as if you own that company, you can sell anything. So just believe in yourself believe in you know your courage be a person that's trustworthy and a person that you know does what you say you're going to do a person of your word and you can succeed absolutely thank you Django a closing deals why he's on the webinar mm-hmm. oh you on mute did you meet yourself that's because he was closing. He was over there talking to the I customer joke, closing. I said, I said the clothes are closing. And then I realized I was on mute. My buddy just busts out laughing at me. Like, I'm just like an absolute <laughs> idiot. I don't even know why I put myself on mute. But so I can be reached. My name is Django, spelled like the movie, D-J-A-N-G-O, and then degree like the temperature. So, and, or, or the degrees, and you know, however you want to think about it. But I can be reached on LinkedIn. I saw that one of the questions someone had was like, how can they pivot from pharma sales or whatever? The number one way I would say that you can get into tech sales is to reach out to people who are in sales. Like my dad, me, I know you guys probably feel the same way. Like I get asked if there are any people of color who um, are interested in sales jobs all the time. But I don't actually have enough friends who are people of color who have interest in sales jobs for all the opportunities that I hear about. And I'm connected to people at Salesforce. I'm connected to people at Carasoft, at resellers in D.C. and Texas and San Francisco. Like I was building apps for a while. I've worked with like all kinds of startups and even here at Quarterpath. So like if you really are interested, reach out and try to find out how you can add value and try to add that value so that I can trust to put you in front of someone. Cause that's all I, I want more people to be people of color to be in these roles. And I believe we have the ability to do it. The first thing we need to do is start talking to each other and, and reach out to those people who are already in the roles. And I'm more than happy to introduce you if we can, you know, have that conversation and I can believe and trust that, you know what, like I'll put my name behind you the same way that my friend put his name behind me. So, you know, I'm here and excited to be able to put you out there. Love it. Thank you. And thank you. I'm happy. I'm happy you saw that. I didn't see that. So again, thank you guys for joining us. Um, I can be reached at I am Joyce Johnson. I am Joyce Johnson on um, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Clubhouse. Um, and then my LinkedIn is um, Joyce J. So I'm, I'm, I'm spend quite a bit of time on LinkedIn and, and um, on Clubhouse. So um, follow me on all the platforms. Go to Y Sales Network dot com register for our annual conference thank you for joining us tonight again i am joyce johnson author speaker sales champion coach and founder of y sales network make it a great thing